is almost certain to pass. In the runoff election between Henderson and McCullough, the next few hours will tell the story. It's up to the voters now. Well, that's the last item, and we still have 30 seconds. Oh, no. You mean Ted's going to have to ad lib? Oh. <laughs> uh, as a reporter, I'm supposed to remain neutral. I'm supposed to have an opinion, but since we, we do have a few moments, let me just say this. You're crazy if you don't all vote for Henderson. <laughs> Understand I'm not taking sides, but just between you and me and the lamppost, I hear that McCullough is a pretty shady character. <laughs> this is Ted Baxter saying good night and good news. That is the most unprofessional thing Ted has ever done. You know, I think we all need a long vacation. You're right, you're right. Well, I've got a week coming. What can you do in a week? Well, outside of creating the world and resting, nothing. <laughs> Can you believe it? Endorsing one candidate and libeling the other on the air? What happened in there? I just threw Ted out of the studio. Threw him out? You mean you fired him? No, I mean I grabbed him and threw him through the door. Mr. Grant, how could you do that? I know, I feel terrible. With just the slightest change in trajectory, I could have thrown him out the window. You know, I think he means it. I think he really did that. Well, probably. Well, so what? Well, Murray, it's just, it's just a thought of physical violence. I just, I don't believe in it. Yeah, but that's Lou's nature. He's a hawk, you're a dove, Ted's a cuckoo. Murray! No <laughs> joke. I'm sorry. Hey, Mayor, what's the matter? Well, I, it's just a thought of someone being physically injured. I, I just don't like it. I never have. It's bothered me since I was a kid. A girl I know broke her leg, and I had to go tell her mother. And Murray, I, I began to stammer. I, I, for ten minutes, all I could do was was, was stammer at her. I mean, there she there she was, and then there I we was, and she, she and, and, no, and, and, study, and, and you study. Somebody ought to go in there and tell him he can't go around throwing people through doors. Well, uh, I'd love to do it, Mayor, but uh, I'm afraid he'd throw me through the door. <laughs> I know that your conduct is none of my business. None. <laughs> and I know that you're very angry. No, I'm not, Mary. No, that's all over and done with. Once I saw Ted smash through that door, <laughs> waving both arms and screaming, a kind of inner peace descended on my soul. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Never bear a grudge, Mary. If you're steamed, do something about it. <laughs> And afterwards, it's forgiven and forgotten, see? No, no, I don't. Physical violence never settles anything. Physical violence has settled every war in history, all football games, most <laughs> prize fights, and several marriages I can think of. Well, that's not the point. I am talking about you. All right, Mary, talk about me. Mr. Grant, you're one of the, the nicest people I know. You're, you're good and you're fair, and we all respect you, but... You've got this violent streak in you, and, and it scares people. I mean, it even scares me. Oh, come on, Mary. I'd never belt you. <laughs> no, Mr. Grant, you have a very bad temper, and one of these days you're going to hurt somebody. I, I didn't hurt Ted. I barely touched him. Smash through that door, waving both arms and screaming? <laughs> oh, I just made that up. <laughs> I, I talk tough, Mary, but I don't hurt people. Come in. Hey! Don't touch me! Well, I don't think I can come into work tomorrow. I can't move my head. Oh, Ted, I'm so sorry. Oh, well, it's not your fault, Lou. It happened after you threw me. I skidded into the cigarette machine. Well, they told you it was hazardous to your health. I'm going to get to a doctor. Now, forget the doctor. You're going to the hospital. Here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh. Lean on me and I'll help you down to my car. 
Oh, I didn't think I made it to the car, Lou. That's too far. Uh, all right, don't worry. Don't worry. I'll carry you to my car. Lou. Huh? Be gentle. Yes. Mr. Ben, you can't carry you. What do you mean I can't carry you? It's too heavy for you. Oh. Why? Here. Hey, use this table. Oh. That'll just make me heavier. It's got wheels. Oh. <laughs> Lou, Mary. Tell the gang I said my last words were, I want the news to go on. So, how are you feeling? Is it uh, hurt? You know the old expression, Mayor, only when I laugh. <laughs> Ooh. Ted, is there anything we can do? Oh, no, no. Georgette was by my side all morning. She read to me and fed me and gave me a sponge bath. Fluffed up my pillows. I finally sent her home. Yes, you're starting to get on my nerves. <laughs> Boy, private room. It's really nice. You know, when I first came here, they put me in a ward. You know how I got this room? The ward pitched in? <laughs> <laughs> Lou insisted. He's, he said he'd pay whatever the cost. It's the least he can do. Well, I've got to meet Marie. I don't get up, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming, Mur. And say, thanks for the candy. How'd you know it was my favorite kind? I didn't. I just wanted to give you something to show you how I really feel about you. <laughs> Good old Mur. Want a jawbreaker, Mur? <laughs> oh, I appreciate the flowers, too. Oh, well, you know, sick room, hospital, it's traditional. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why people just don't give the cash. <laughs> oh, I went to the game store and got the stuff you wanted. Oh, well, yeah, it's not for me, you know, but you never know when my little nephew may come to visit. What'd you get? Yeah. <laughs> Got your parcheesi. And your Chinese checkers. And the little game that you shake and make the little balls roll into the... The clown's nose? No, no, they were out of that, I asked. No, oh. this one, you shake it and the little balls form the outline of a duck. <laughs> Gee, I never tried that one before. Yeah, well, I imagine it works on pretty much the same principle as the clown's nose. <laughs> Hi, old buddy. Hi, Mary. Hello, Mr. Grant. How very nice of you to drop by. <laughs> Say, you're not still mad at me. Well, I really don't think this is the time or the place to discuss that. But I want to know. But uh, don't you think you should chat with Ted? Why should I chat with Ted? I like you better. <laughs> Don't mind me. This is better than television. <laughs> so, uh, how you feeling? Well, not bad. Uh, I'm not complaining. Uh, the guy learns to live with constant pain. <laughs> uh, gee, I'm, I I'm sorry, Ted. Uh, here, I, I brought you some flowers. Well, I already have some. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Say, I wonder if there's some place I could put these. Beats me. <laughs> That's okay. What the heck? I'll just stand here and hold him. That way Ted can enjoy him while we chat. Well, Ted, I think I'll be running along. Oh, don't leave now, Mayor. I've got everything but the one web foot and the beak. <laughs> no, no, Ted, I don't want to tire someone who's been through as much as you have. So what do the doctors say? Well, they say I'm a lucky guy, Lou. Not too many people survive an accident like that. You mean just being thrown out, are uh, you? No, no, no. Four car collision. <laughs> huh? well, I had to make up something, Lou. I didn't want anyone to think you did this. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and they say you're lucky? <laughs> I'll say. Boy, if the fire had hit the gas tank, it'd have been curtains for sure. <laughs> well, if, if there's anything I can do. Uh, no, 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 no. I mean it. Anything. You just ask. Ask me for anything. How about a glass of wine? Here. Here. Take a glass of wine. Okay. Wait, how about a cube? Yeah. Let's put a cube in there you go. Remember, for what I did to you, I'd be happy to do anything. Anything? <laughs> anything. 
Would you, would you sign my neck brace? <laughs> would I sign my neck brace? Of course I will. Sign it to Ted Baxter, the world's best anchor man. <laughs> Baxter, the world's best anchor man. <laughs> For whom? <laughs> For whom I will do anything. <laughs> I oh, how do they expect me to rewrite a snow bulletin when it's like a furnace in here? Why are you rewriting a snow bulletin? Well, Ted says that when he reads a snow bulletin, he wants people to shudder. I try to explain that all his newscasts have that effect. Hey, since when do you let Ted tell you how to write your copy? Uh, I guess I'm feeling sorry for him because, well, you know, he's working with a handicap. Although that never bothered me before. <laughs> Who fooled with the thermostat? <laughs> well, I did, Lou. Uh, I thought it would be a nice conservation gesture to turn it down to 85. Murray, you mustn't turn down the thermostat. Ted should be in a warm place. Someday, if there's any justice. Hi, guys. Hi, Hello, Ted. Ted. Hey, what do you think? Oh, autographs. Yeah, that's a switch, isn't it? Me getting autographs from ordinary people. <laughs> well, they are my public. Yeah, takes a lot of guts to let them get that close to your throat. <laughs> oh, Lou. Lou, can I use your phone to make a couple of calls? What's wrong with your phone? Oh, okay, okay. You want to use your phone? No phone, no phone, no phone, no phone. Doctor says I shouldn't climb any stairs to my dressing room, but you say no phone, no phone, no phone, no phone. Ted! Use the phone. Thanks, Lou. I think I have our weather bulletin. Sleet and high winds to be followed by the biggest snow job in history. <laughs> Gee, that's a terrific looking chair, Lou. I wish I had one like this in my dressing room. Come on, what's wrong with a chair in your dressing room? Oh, that's right. You never get down there, do you? <laughs> and why should you? Why climb all those stairs when all you have to do is go directly into the studio from this office? Ted, what do you want from me? You want me to give you my office? Is that what you want? Oh, no, Lou. I don't want you to give me this office. I want you to share it with me. <laughs> share my office? Yeah, sure. Why not, Lou? All it would take is a little chair right over there. You wouldn't mind sitting in a little chair, would you, Lou? Ted! Oh, Ted! Oh. 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 It's all right, it'll pass. It's just a little spasm. They always go away. Okay, Ted. You can share my office, but only until your neck gets better. Oh, Lou, Lou, it'll be wonderful. We'll be roommates. <laughs> That way we can sit together and, and rap about my new feature on the show. You knew what? Three minutes at the end of every show, Ted Baxter speaks out on the important issues of the day. You know, like Eric Severide? <laughs> except, except when I do it, you'll be able to understand it. <laughs> uh, uh, no, uh, no, uh, no, Ted, I don't think it'll work. Why not, Lou? Maury could write it. Mary could come up with some ideas. It's something I've, I've wanted to do all my life, Lou. No, Ted. I, I really don't care for it. Oh, come it. on, Lou. Let me try just this once. <laughs> and if you don't like it, you can, you can do what you always do. You can pick me up and throw me through a door. <laughs> You know, it's bad enough I have to write one opinion spot for Ted. But I had to write three so he can choose. Uh, you know something, Murray? Remember that little girl I told you about in grammar school, the one who broke her leg? Oh, yeah. You know, I just realized something. She used people, too. I mean, everybody carried her books for her, opened doors for her. 
teacher felt so sorry for, he made me switch parts with her in the Christmas pageant. He made her the sugar plum fairy. I got to be half a camel. <laughs> yes. No, still here. Yeah, he's here too. We'll be right in. You guys weren't slipping out already, were you? <laughs> slipping out? Ted, it's after eight. I finally came up with the title for my new spot. A Piece of My Mind. <laughs> well, if they can split an atom, why not? <laughs> now all I need is a topic for my first editorial. But Ted, we already gave you three. Industrial pollution, runaway prices, and political spending. Heck, uh, nothing personal, guys, but... Boring. <laughs> boring? Murray, they're all safe subjects. They've, everybody's done them. I want to go after the real sacred cows, like single women. <laughs> what about single women? How come they let you buy them dinner if they don't expect any action? <laughs> Ted, you can't do an editorial because you keep striking out. <laughs> Mr. Grant is never going to allow that. Kids, trust me. I'm the honcho on this project. I'll handle Lou. Ted, don't you think that you're carrying this thing just a little too far? Look, I know it's late. We're all tired. What do you say we go get some coffee and we'll talk about it, huh? Oh, gee, I'd like to, Mary, but I've got a date. And you two have got an awful lot of work to do. <laughs> <laughs> wonder where he got the picture. Where else? His wallet. <laughs> Mr. Grant, I need you an after-dinner drink. Thank you, Mary. What are you up to? Well, since when do I have to be up to something just because I ask you over for dinner and a few drinks? I just want to know why you're trying to ply me with alcohol. <laughs> ply you with alcohol? You know, that's really kind of insulting. Oh, I'm sorry, Mary. I didn't mean to insult you. Oh, forget it. Here, let me freshen that for you. <laughs> All right, okay. I do want to have a talk with you. Okay, but you don't know, feel you have to lead up to it. Shoot. Right, just shoot. Just lay it on the line straight out. Yeah. Okay, here it is. Shoot you want. Shoot you're going to get. <laughs> Mr. Grant, before I say this... Mary. Yes, okay, you're right. The whole beating around the bush, which I've always thought was a really dumb expression, you know? But, I, yeah, okay, Mr. Grant, I don't... Suppose that you remember a discussion that we had. Um, it was about Ted, um, Owen violence, and your being gentler. Uh, I don't suppose that you remember any of that, do you? Every word. <laughs> it's probably the most memorable thing you've ever said to me. How'd you like to forget it? <laughs> I don't understand. Mr. Grant, Ted is getting away with murder. The old Mr. Grant just wouldn't have stood for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. The old Lou Grant would have yelled and bullied and scared poor Ted half to death. Mm, I know, I know. <laughs> I don't get this. First you come to me and you tell me, Mr. Grant, you have a violent nature, so you must try to change. Mm -hmm. So after considerable soul searching, I change. I become what you see now. A gentle, tolerant, peace-loving, non-violent pussycat. <laughs> then, then you come to me tonight, and you tell me you've decided you like me the way I was. Well, no, Mary. I've got something to tell you. I like the way I am. And this is how I intend to stay. A gentle, tolerant, peace-loving, non-violent pussycat. <laughs> So you just better get used to the new Lou Grant, Mary. From now on, I'm going to be the warmest, sweetest, nicest, most sympathetic, considerate, understanding human being you ever met in your life. I don't think I like you anymore. <laughs> Which goes now to the States for approval. 
In order for the bill to pass, it must be ratified by two-thirds of the 48 states. <laughs> oh, two more. <laughs> Correction, make that four-thirds. <laughs> now we present a new department. A piece of my mind. What is he doing? I don't know. He wrote it himself. <laughs> Tonight... A piece of my mind examines big business versus the little man. Now, for years, the little man's been taking it on the chin. Well, good news, my friends. Today, the tables are turned. Ted Baxter, the reporter who wouldn't be intimidated, announced a lawsuit for $250,000 against Station WJM for gross negligence. What? He's suing his own station. <laughs> on the air. I want to make... One thing clear, I don't include producer Lou Grant in this action. <laughs> no, Lou can't be responsible for everything that goes on at his station. <laughs> and I know Lou joins me in hoping this suit teaches a certain station that human safety isn't something to be trifled with. When Mr. Baxter finishes the news, have him step into my office. What are you doing? Just getting the ambulance warmed up. <laughs> oh, Ted, uh, Lou would like to see you in his office. Right. Stay there. What did Lou say about the show? Oh, wait, he did. He, 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 he. <laughs> Speechless, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I think I threw a pretty good scare into the station. Ted, look into my eyes. <laughs> well, sure, Lou. <laughs> what do you see there? Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, oh, I, I wasn't really going to go through with it, Lou. I was just going to worry them a little bit, you know, use it for leverage, get a little more vacation. <laughs> You've got just 20 seconds to take down those pictures while your face still resembles them. <laughs> I wasn't going to ask for a lot of vacation. I just for a couple of weeks and my neck got better. <laughs> what the heck? I'm, I'm feeling practically fine, Lou, thanks to your chair and your office and... I don't need any vacation at all, though. I feel just great. In fact, I'll stay late. I'll work early. <laughs> Weekends, Lou. Holidays and my birthday. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, I'm going down to my dressing room now to work on tomorrow's show. Mr. Grant's office. Yes, this is Mr. Grant's office. No, it is no longer Ted Baxter's office. Yes, I'm sure. You're very welcome. Who was it? Ted. <laughs> And don't you feel better that you were able to convey to Ted that you were angry and who was boss without resorting to violence? Yeah, I feel a lot better. Right. Uh, Mary, would you do one little thing for me? Yeah, sure. Uh, get a hold of building maintenance and tell them I need a new door. Right. Uh, Mr. Grant, what's wrong with this door? As soon as you leave, I'm going to put my fist through it. <laughs> 